So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's Motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another instalment of Silent Night NPCs from the podcast Under the Stairs. We're taking the classic beloved movie remake, Silent Night from 2012. We're splitting up into five minute reviewable segments. I'm getting podcasters from around the globe to join me to discuss the five minutes in excruciatingly long form detail. Uh, because if not in this movie, what movie? And uh, yeah, at the end of that, at the end of that, um, we don't score it or anything like that. We mosey on out, and that is it. On this episode, we're covering, we're covering the start. This is zero minutes to five minutes. The majority of this is credits um, and Christmas tunes and a lot of nonsense. If I was ever going to do that with someone, though, I would do it with this man here. He is my colleague, my buddy over at Jaws is Shite and other regrettable outbursts. He's also one of the masterminds behind Scott Liam versus Evil. He's a phenomenally talented Liam Rafferty. How are you doing, Liam? I am doing absolutely average. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Like this is this is the last one of these I have to record. And I'm kind of happy for that because I feel like I've spent a lot of time with this movie. And I I don't think I, I enjoy this movie. I'll put that forward. This is like entertainment. It's horrible, but it's entertaining as fuck. But it's entertaining if you're watching it once every couple of years. I've seen this movie now in the last month, like in various shades and various time things, about six times. Really? I'm over it. I'm over it. I've seen this once, and to be fair, I actually watched Silent Night, Deadly Night because I thought we were watching something oh, totally no. different until two weeks ago, and I was like. Wait, I've watched a completely wrong movie for this. So if you want notes on Silent Night, Deadly Night... Well, this is, the, <laughs> this is technically the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, <laughs> which you would not know because there's only two elements in this movie that actually even reference the original. And one of them is done better, so the, the impaling on the antler's death, much better in this movie than it is mm -hmm. in the original. But the scene with the, the kid and his ailing grandfather, who, like... Like, he's like he's in a coma but all of a sudden speaks to him and the original movie is fucking terrifying like, like we kids traumatized and this one here it's like it's like jay from jay and silent bob stunt double <laughs> stealing money from his comatose granddad who looks like a 35 year old man that they've just drawn gray makeup on i obviously then watched this after watching yeah, yeah. the movie and i didn't realize it was a remake I just assumed that there's only so much you can do in a Christmas horror, and being impaled in antlers is one. No, no, so, no. This is this is a this is a remake. This is a remake in the same way that House of Wax is a remake of the House of Wax movie, and that isn't really. It's actually more yeah. a remake of Tourist Trap than it is House of Wax. But they mm -hmm. kind of mesh the two together and put it out as a this is the remake. 
Um, that was a that was a great movie. The House of Wax remake is a fucking yeah. good movie. I like people piss on that because Paris Hilton's in it. That is literally the only reason people piss on it. It's entertaining, gnarly effects. She dies in it, so I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't know what people are moaning about. Um, <laughs> this one here is it's poorly written. It's actually overcast, like in terms mm-hmm. of like the casting does not make. Malcolm McDowell is chewing up so much scenery it is the greatest thing. Just watching him tiptoe through accents as if they're all the same and they're not. Um, and uh, what's his face? The, the the guy who plays the, the red herring Santa thingy, uh, Donald. I can't remember his first name. Right. Like, he's, he's, in, in, he's in loads of things. He's it, fucking he's incredible. In <laughs> his monologue when he's been arrested, falsely imprisoned, and he's doing, it's Christmas! This is <laughs> fucking... Like, it's a great monologue, and you're like, you are too good for this movie. Why, why, are, you, why are you in this movie with everyone else? Um, I think he's just trying to rack up credits, because he is in everything. everything you, I don't even know his name. Everything you watch, you're like... He's he in is. This, he's, that, he's in that, tons that. of stuff. Um, did like the so you watched the original Santa Night Deadly Night? Was that the first time you'd ever seen that? No, no, I'd right. seen that before. So I just watched it pointlessly, thinking. That... <laughs> did you have you ever seen any of the sequels? No. Right. So no. the second one is the the one that has the infamous garbage day line that everyone fucking loves. Um, but then there's another three sequels after that. One of which is marginally related in a way that doesn't make sense. And then the other two are like basically standalone movies. Right. And the fifth one is actually a lot of fun. The fifth one is a standalone story and it is surprisingly fun, even though it's set at Christmas and there's really no Christmas reference at all in it. Or snow, which there isn't in this that, movie either. That sounds quite good, to be fair. <laughs> I would check that one out. The thing about this one as well is, like, on paper... I like a lot of what this is trying to do. The idea of like a Santa Con, those things exist in America. Um, the idea that the killers dress like Santa, so you can essentially blend in. The idea that he is punishing people for being naughty. So on the naughty mm-hmm. list, like giving them box, they don't really flesh that out at all in this movie. But the idea that they're all getting parcels with coal in it because they're mm-hmm. on the naughty list, love that idea. That very very quickly gets pushed to the side, and then they just go off piste. And from that all point, right. you're just like, well, what? don't know what we're doing um and in no greater no greater way can that be uh summarized than the first five minutes which has just awful death this is fucking <laughs> awful acting awful death um so it kicks off liam with a lot up on the rooftop you like that plays all the way through this you've got um you've got a bit of christmas music playing in the background and you're getting this is 2012 this movie came out so you're getting the interspersed scenes of grimness while this happy song plays in the background and it is just lots of shots of the the dirtiest house i've ever seen um Mm -hmm. so much so the sink that he goes to shave um uh looks like it is a sink full of piss it's like yellow water it's fucking horrible it's like someone's pissed in the sink and not taking the plug out because that's the issue with pissing in the sink. <laughs> not taking the plug out. Not the, not the act of actually pissing in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there. Um, <laughs> we've all made sure the plug wasn't in. Um, so, yeah, he's like, as he's walking around this house, though, um, we hear like kind of muffled screams um, mm-hmm. in the background. And what I love about this is he, he first he shaves and then mm-hmm. he gets the old nail clippers out and then starts doing his nails. I have never, ever clipped my nails as smoothly as that. Mine, you use that to kind of fight at it. You end up ragging it all. Things are firing across the room. <laughs> this guy, like a knife through butter, just precision. Everything. <laughs> Absolute precision. Then yeah. he goes to his case. He's got two cases. One case is full of... One case is clearly the torture case because it's full of things like, like chisels, which I, I love how they're always included in torture like things because the thought of it is horrible but they're never used like I've never I can't think of any movie where I've ever seen a chisel used as a weapon but they're always in a torture bag I can think of a real life crime where it was used though (laughs) remember that one in Glasgow where the guy got his balls chiseled that's right got them chiseled off it was in the paper like they used a chisel and every every man alive just thought oh my god like just kill me (laughs) (laughs) why chisel it off (laughs) 
It's so much it's like worse. Robin Hood, it's like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Why a spoon, <laughs> brother? Because it's dull, it'll hurt more. Um, so, yeah, so he, like, he's got this bag of like, like murder implements. And then beside that, he has a box full of ready-to-use Santa masks. And he's like, none of these are good. So I must <laughs> cut the bottom off this one and then stick a fucking beard on. This beard, by the way, must be self-cleaning. Because there are a few times here where it gets completely splattered with blood, and in the next scene he's standing pristine, which makes me think he's like, "Oh fuck!" When that he's away, I'm changing my backup Santa suit. Maybe that's why he had three masks. It's like emergency backup Santa suits. Um, Is a man with a beard? I can't even eat soup without getting it everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> I definitely call bullshit. I, I, I feel I feel like he's speaking to my people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so he's uh, cuts off the bottom, sticks a white beard on it. Um, and then we get the old uh, directed by Steve C. Miller and I'm like Steve C. Miller sounds like he didn't do a lot uh, <laughs> and then I wrote that in my notes as a prompt for me to go and check which I've duly not done so I don't think he directed a lot uh, <laughs> there is a muffled voice coming from the basement no and you're like, oh, what the fuck is this? And uh, there's a guy downstairs. We find out later on this is Jordan, who is a police detective, um, who is like the sh- one the shittiest police detective amongst, or deputy, sorry, one of the, a shitty deputy amongst a lot of shitty deputies. None of these people are really good at their job. Um, and two, a bit of a dickhead. Like, like <laughs> also, terrible actor. Like, the, the, the way this guy acts is fucking incredible he's like bah, 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 don't do that and you're like is that a like, strapped to a chair and not a single bead of sweat just like fuck it I'm, I'm gonna die anyway so I'm just gonna sit here perfectly perfectly manicured <laughs> makeup <laughs> yeah but he's wearing he's wearing a, a a halo of Christmas tree lights which we're gonna get into the physics here. I'm not convinced. Um, but anyway, Santa comes downstairs, and Jordan's like, J- "Just let me go, okay? Please, cause, cause I didn't know she was married. Wait, what, 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 what are you doing?" Like, and I'm like, "Oh no, this is bad. This is bad." And Santa is like me. Santa turns around and picks up an axe because he wants this conversation to end. And I'm like, "Yes, him with the axe." Some of the dialogue here is absolutely fucking amazing. Right, he says. Uh, just look, it's it's a fucking misunderstanding. I didn't. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, she was begging for it. What the fuck did you? These are words, and there's gaps and stars. Uh, I didn't read that. Cause you're her husband. Fuck. I didn't. Okay. Just how? How the fuck am I supposed to know that she's married? Cause she wasn't. She wasn't even wearing a fucking wedding ring. And it's like it is like. <laughs> it starts. I imagine a writer writing this. Uh, Jordan's I, I, trapped I, in a chair, ex- exacerbated. He just speaks shite. I see. I can get it. See if I've done something wrong, mm-hmm. and Lena is like just looking at me. I will just keep saying things because <laughs> I know I'm. Fe- I know I'm guilty. I'll. I will run with things. She might not know anything, but by yep. the end of it, I've revealed everything. everything. I, I get that being tied to a chair. I would just be if like, if you were tied to a chair though, because you believed that the woman you were having an affair with, her husband, came downstairs dressed like Santa, right, menacingly stood over you. Would you use the words she was fucking begging for it? At that point, I'd probably be like, oh, do you know what? I'm I'm kind of I'm screwed anyway. So. All right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and for a penny, and for a pound. She Mate, told me it she was, was the best sex she ever had. <laughs> she was dying for it. She said your Santa costume's shit as well. <laughs> said that's not even a real beard. Um, <laughs> she did say, though, that your nail cutting skills Aye. are on fucking point, by the way. Um, She's never seen nails so smooth. <laughs> so Santa... I like first... these, these raggedy bitches here. Look at, look at mine. <laughs> Bitten to the quick from nervousness. Um... <laughs> So Santa's holding an axe, and I'm like, yes, we're going to get the axe. They tease us with this. They're like, I could kill him with the axe, but there is at least two amazing axe deaths after this, so we're not giving you that just now. Instead, I'm going to go, and I'm going to use electricity in a way which electricity 
and just fuses in general are designed to mitigate. But uh, once again, don't want to pick too much at it. Um, he walks away. Jordan says, "I swear to God, I'm never, I'm, I'm never going to touch her again." Okay, I get it. Um, I want to get the fuck out of here. Okay, you're, wait, you're, you're not her husband. Now he's he's worked all this out with no dialogue. <laughs> he's like, "Wait, you're not her husband. You're just a sick fuck." And then he's like, "Say something." And Santa <laughs> walks over to a generator, an amplifier of energy, and cranks up to 11. Um, and the result of this is <laughs> Jordan Jordan is electrocuted, uh-huh. which would never happen because the cabling is insulated. That's why cabling <laughs> isn't just raw. Right? It's, it's, it's insulated. Two, the plug would have a fuse. I don't want to, like, kick... It's a, in principle, it's a fun death, but there's a fuse in there. That fuse ain't going to have that. Like it's going right. to blow before them. But the idea that an electric shock from something you can have in your house would be so powerful that your eyes would pop. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm with you. I'm it's, with you. It's fucking... It's like the bulbs would blow before his eyes blow. You know what I mean? I actually... See, when I watched it, I generally just assumed that he had rigged up something else. I didn't think it was just the lights that electrocuted him. Sorry. It's, I think it's the lights. I think it is just the lights, dude. I think it is only lights. And That's, that... that's painful, then. <laughs> I, I thought, right, there's a, he's rigged up some sort of electric chair, yep. so it's all good. I didn't think it was quite as tragic <laughs> it is 100 percent tragic as it was um so he's dead and santa walks upstairs and that's the end of our five minutes it's not a lot happens here really to be honest apart from deputy jordan um dies i, I like it's mm. i like the shift i did like that you you were convinced you were getting the axe kill and yep. then you didn't i mm-hmm. thought that's actually quite it's quite a good opening. It, may, it keeps me interested. It makes me think this is going to do something slightly different yep. than I'm expecting. Obviously, until the rest of the movie happens and yep. it doesn't do that. But well, the thing, the thing about it is as well, they do um, like when you see what the the woman that was tied up. When you see what has essentially been done to her, where she's been fucking chopped up in a lot of pieces and her insides are hanging out. And I'm think like I remember the first time I watched this, I was like such a fucking cop out because that's the death that I wanted to see. But later on. When he's uh, when he kills the fucking Jay lookalike from Jane Silent Bob, mm. like he axes him in the back and then turns around and you get like a proper full on axe right to this guy's face and easy like the practical effects in this one are digital effects that blow the eyeballs, but the practical effects in this movie are really 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 well mm-hmm. done and it is a surprisingly mean spirited movie. For a Christmas mm-hmm. movie, like I know Christmas movies that are horror movies tend to go on the bleaker side. This one goes all in. There is not yeah. one character in this movie out with the possibly homosexual father. Um, <laughs> there is not one of them in this movie who has anything nice to say about Christmas. Uh. Everyone fucking hates it, which makes me think... Why do they have a Santa con? Like, <laughs> why this town? Why Cryer? I don't, I don't get it at all. Um, but this was, I, I, it's what it is. It sets the tone in some respects. The movie mm-hmm. gets a lot better from this point, And they don't shoot their load too early with the kills either. They mm-hmm. do kind of... Like, the next death after this one is the electrocution of a little child. So... Uh, when I say a little child, the most annoying child in the world, and yeah. even then, that is electrocution. So it's still not an actual, like, like bloody death. Mm-hmm. You don't get that until you know, like, the woman's fed to the chipper, and then from there, it's like, like, blood gore, blood gore, blood gore, right to the end. So they they do kind of follow a kind of sensible uh. template that way, but this is just a goofy death. It's, it's too goofy for me. I can't. I can't take it serious. I'm not going to take it serious. I, I refuse. To. Especially now that I know it was really just the lights. That it's just this year. Like, you, like, uh, once again, if that, if there's another meaning behind it, show it. If it's yeah. an electric chair, show me it's an electric chair. But when he's found, when his body's found, they make reference to, oh yeah, his his head's covered in Christmas lights, and I'm like, I see. I I still just gave it. We more credit than it deserves. I can see. Yeah. 
I'm like, I can see it all obviously all behind the scenes. He's rigged up this chair. What a clever, clever Santa. What, what, a, what a smart Santa Claus <laughs> this guy is. Um, one of my favourite facts about this movie in terms of the, the, the kind of the Santa Claus stuff is at the very end of this movie where they finally reveal the killer as a character because we're doing these out of order it doesn't matter um, mm. I think we've also played the, the episode where we revealed the killer so once again that's also fine uh, but when we reveal the killer here and you find out it's basically no cunt you've ever seen in this movie <laughs> like just literally like oh it was me all along <laughs> but like when the camera pans out you see his like his truck, and, like he's got his name on it, but he's, he's a he, he's a chimney repair man. So he's he's a Santa killer who repairs chimneys, and I'm just like that. They like they really went all in with this. You know, they really <laughs> really really went all in. They were like, if we're gonna do it, we're doing it right. Let's all the chips in. Fucking awesome, man. Because in a town this size, once you fix the chimney, that chimney's fixed for, I don't know. Touch wood, but I've, I've never had to fix my chimney. So eventually, quite quickly, you're going to get through this town, everyone's chimneys are fixed. Yep. It's not really a career with longevity. It's, uh, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. I like, it is it's one that has a glass ceiling pretty quick. Yep. Yep. Unless you, unless the town that you're in has like 100,000 houses, then maybe, maybe, and they all have chimneys. Like, and they all have chimneys, <laughs> which actually, when you watch the rest of the film, as I have it playing in the background, the rest of the houses don't really have chimneys. You don't see much in the way of any fireplaces or anything no. that would even indicate that this is a chimney-rich town. <laughs> so it does not. But then there's also this indication where there's a, one of the characters mentions like the urban legend of this kid, basically, who sees his dad go tonto and murder people with a homemade flamethrower. Because that detail's thrown in there, but it's kind of overlooked very quickly. He fashioned himself a weapon. And I'm like, that That looks like a, like, what was he? Was he like a fucking munitions expert? <laughs> like a real fucking deal. And then he goes town to town every year. And you're like, that's the sort of detail you would imagine you would know about on the news. Like, yeah. oh, it's Christmas time. Which time will be met with the flame flow, you know, flame throwing, wielding Santa Claus killer? It's, just, it's I don't know, it's... Like I say, as a standalone, I'm glad they never revisited this because as a standalone, it kind of works as this weird little oddity. But that ending with him kind of looking at the camera and all but winking, you know what I mean? Uh, and then driving <laughs> off is like, are we getting a fucking sequel? Are they making me sit through a sequel to this movie? And they didn't do it. So you get points from that from me. Um, right, uh, like, is there anything else we want to say about this? Anything we haven't covered? Are we, are we, are we good to mosey out here, Liam? I think we're yeah, we're good to go. I don't I don't really like Santa. Years ago, I went to a Santa Claus thing at mm -hmm. school, uh, and I asked for the troubles were all kind of happening. So I asked for peace in Ireland, yep. and the Santa at Strathclyde Park told me that he couldn't get that, but he could give me a piece and jam. <laughs> and since then, I have never trusted Santa Claus or any fake Santa Clauses, because all I wanted. <laughs> It's Catholicism. <laughs> the best it? Santa ever, by the way. The best Santa ever. Imagine telling that to a child, I can't give you peace in Ireland, but I can give you a peace in jam. I, I kind of love... Yeah. As if it's comparable. But I kind of love this idea that in his head, all the world's problems can be sorted with a peace in jam. He's thinking Which, to himself, see if they all just sat around the table with a couple of slices of bread, we put jam on there. That's how, that's how you bring happened. the world together. Did anyone think jam. about that? That's like Ireland? one of my favourite things I've ever fucking heard, man, honestly. <laughs> now, since then, I've never trusted Santa because obviously I was just doing that to be like, he'll give me bigger and better presents yeah. because I'm he, thinking he'll about downsize from that, I'll get a PlayStation. You know what I mean? Exactly. And nope, I just left with sadness. And... I also think that had he delivered peace in Ireland, I don't think you would have been able to conceptually understand how big a deal that is. You'd probably be sitting no. there going, that's not under my tree, Santa. Yeah. And to be fair, I was in primary in primary one. I had no idea what was going on in Ireland. I just knew there was something happening. <laughs> and it was not going to be solved by a piece in jam. Yeah, like they talk so, about like like so I'm old enough that I remember I remember things like I'm old enough but not as old as Baz but I'm old enough to remember like Jerry Adams would come on the news and they had to give him like a voiceover mm -hmm. and it was the, like let's make this man sound non-threatening by making him sound like a fucking Bond villain the most threatening shit ever the voice that they had speaking over the top sounded like a, like a pure psychopath 
just reading out dialogue or piece. I was, calling, I was always, you know, it was always piece like stuff that he was talking about because he was on the news. Um, <laughs> but it was done in the. It's that way where Crime Watch used to finish, where like, look at all these killers that are out in the area, but you have sweet dreams. And you were like, what? They're in my area? What? I want to roll this back. And they're like, bye. And I'm like, fucking. No, and then you know the, the host dies, and then you watch that Netflix series "Who Killed Jill Dando," and they're like, "Oh, they've solved it," and they and they've not. <laughs> no, they haven't, because you would have heard about that. I thought Shin Fein was a person's name. <laughs> <laughs> I had a joke about McDonald's giving Shin Fein action figures, and I thought it was a genuine man until I was about fifteen. <laughs> Could have been later than that. <laughs> so, what, what, who is Shin? <laughs> I'm very Irish in the name. You should have pronounced that right. Is it Gaelic? <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I've turned Silent Night into the trouble. You've managed to stretch a, a bit here that I genuinely said to you, "There's like, there's nothing that happens." And we've we've done 25 minutes on this some bitch. So I'll take that to the bank, ladies and gents. We are running episodes from the first through to the 24th of this month, back to back which means there will be another episode coming tomorrow. So until then, I'll speak to you next time.